Hi there guys, I'm out today just looking for some components to finish off this birch bark container that I've been working on. This is a very very nice piece of thick birch that I got some time ago. And you can see it's very very pliable even when it's been dried out for a considerable amount of time. It's still very very healthy and perfect for making a birch bark container out of. I cut this freehand with a knife which is why it's a little bit wonky but I'm sure it'll be fine. And I punched the holes with some tutu rimfire cases and I did need a few of them because they tend to buckle a bit under the pressure. But there are many other ways you can do that in an outdoor setting very easily with just a knife. But I need some components to finish it off. I need some pine resin to seal it and also some cord to stitch it. And I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to do a video on pine pitch glue, which is a very, very easy compound that you can make or a type of pitch to do a number of different things with in bushcraft settings. I've come across a spruce tree here and spruces are very very useful trees and we can get an awful lot of resources from them especially for the project that I've got going today and they can be quite easy to identify because if you look at the base of the needle on a spruce tree you'll see a small woody peg like almost like a socket that the needle plugs into and it's left behind when you pull the needle away. The bark on this tree is young and when they get older they get very very scaly with thick kind of flaky scales all over them but when they're quite young like this one they look almost pitted and bobbly all over. A very kind of brown orangey colour. We still have some needles left on this tree and that gives us a bit of an idea of what kind of spruce this is. And This is Norway spruce. The reason you can tell that is simply because the needles are between one and two centimetres long. They're a deep green slightly pointing up the twig and they're four sided and they don't have any kind of blue lines running up them a lot like Sitka spruce does which is vastly outnumbering the Norway spruces in this country as a popular plantation. The cone is also a fantastic indicator of what kind of conifer it is and this one's between 12 and 15 centimetres long with sort of irregular diamond shapes running all the way up it and it's a very very large cone that droops down. I've got myself a stick here it has a slight point on it. Nothing fancy whatsoever and you can spend some a great length of time on digging sticks but really they're to be cast aside once finished with. The easiest way to dig the roots up out of this tree, you're looking for the smaller roots, is to find one of these main roots that run down at the base and just follow it out. And you can see already we've come across some good cord and the thing to do is not to pull but to keep following it and then freeing it up as you go. You start to find them crossing over on each other and then you end up following another. So you can see here we just need to free it up very slightly and you know it's starting to come together. But we'll keep going with this one too. Looks like it's going into a very very big root just there. goes into this main vein by the looks of it. Oh no, it goes over the top. You can see we've got some very, very good cordage there. Real exceptional bit of spruce root, very pliable as you can see there. So some very good lengths of cordage there and while it's fresh it's very pliable stuff as you can see got a good roll of it. Just chuck that on here. Now we need some resin and unfortunately the stuff on this is a bit too thin and dry so I'm going to go find one that's taking a bit of damage and get this stick and gather a bit more. You can see here on this tree that it's taken damage at some stage and it's attempting to heal itself by pushing sap out which hardens on the surface and often looks very scabby and black when old but when fresh you'll see it running down and dripping 
much like this bit just here. And whether the resin be old or new, that's what we're looking for to make our pitch glue with. A piece of bark like this western red and a tapered stick will be absolutely fine for getting the bark. When it's fresh it's very sticky and very hard to get off, but when it's dry you can just peel a little bit off like crumbs and it doesn't really stick to anything, so you can choose which one you'd rather work with, but quantity is the main thing. To collect the sap just run your stick along the trail below. I always usually aim for the excess that's running down below the wound than actually picking at the wound itself. If it's a really old wound and there's huge bubbles of sap on the outside it's not so bad, but if it's fresh and it's trying to heal itself, sometimes you can just be slowing that down and there's always plenty of excess running down anyway. But I'm going to make my way around this area of the woodland because there's plenty of conifer around here and find some other trees that are bleeding out and collect some sap. I've been wandering around the woods now for about 20 minutes and I've got quite a healthy amount of sap there, some really fresh doughy stuff and also a bit of particles in the other bits but that's not too much of a problem as the bigger stuff can be removed. But as far as containers go I'm using some goose eggs that I've uh, hollowed out. These eggs went bad so I um, took the content out and washed them out a bit, took the membrane out and um, yeah they should make a perfect container to sit in the embers of a fire and actually make my pitch in. But I need to transfer this sap into these eggs without damaging them which is what I'll do next before I make a fire. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I also have a backup egg just in case. We've almost got all the components for our pitch and uh, I'm going to make my way in the woodlands now and get a fire going. So I've got some good spruce cord here need to check the pieces because sometimes you can split it down if it's too thick and that is kind of a good way of using it. Like this piece here, I think I'll stick with first. First of all I'm just going to take the bark off of the spruce root here. It's very very easy to get off. Once you've got one side off you can just peel the rest. It's just really about freeing it up initially. So we're left with a really nice piece of cord like that, very pliable. And you want to check the piece of cord and decide whether you want to split it in half because it's very easy to do and have two pieces of cord or just keep it as whole. But with this one I think I'm going to split it in half. And it's very easy to do, you just take your knife just like this and you've split the grain of the root and you can just use your fingers then to pry it apart. And if you find one side's getting thinner, I usually use my thumb like this and my fingers to guide it and the root just splits very easily and if it's sort of drifting off one side and getting thinner, over lean the other side and it will bring it back down the centre of the grain. But this one's really easy, we can just go right through and then we've got two really nice pieces of cord and we can start stitching. So there's the top bit so far, just a little bit to strengthen it. Holes are a little bit too big, but uh, we can always fill those up with a bit of resin to waterproof it. But this is the top, fortunately, so that's not too important.
So the container is finished and it isn't looking too bad. Very, very strong. It just needs a little bit of resin now and all these little holes that are admittedly too big. Or I probably could have used some bigger spruce, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Just need to seal it up and it'll be a good little mug to drink out of. Wouldn't take much to stone boil in that though. <laughs> but there we go. So this gives me a good reason to need some pine pitch. So I'm just going to get a little fire going and obviously get my pitch made up and we'll go through the process of how to make it. What I'm doing here is just building a small fire and I've got a basic fire laid down with some hard wood, some ash, which is really the only hard wood I have at my disposal currently in this area, but ash is absolutely fine. And what we're going to do is heat up the sap and turn it into a liquid state. And when it's in a liquid state, we need to add other compounds to it, or other medium to it, I beg your pardon, to give us like a compound, a workable compound like glue that we can use on the container or, or whatever you need the glue for. You can even use it for repairing a tarp if you really wanted to. Although the sap alone is pretty good actually. Um, so I've got some larch here. This is some really fast burning larch. All conifers burn generally pretty quick when dry because um, they contain quite a bit of resin as we're using. And I've got some hardwoods over here and what I'll do is I'll get the fire going and when it's established I'm going to put the hardwoods on and let it die down to ember and then take some of that charcoal from the hardwood and mix it in with my liquefied sap and build the pitch that we need. I got given this beautiful fire steel by Ant from Seven Blades or Ant's Wild Camping and this is a really kind gift from Ant and I'd, I'd just like to take this moment to say thanks Ant for this. It's an amazing fire steel and it's so beautifully crafted. Look at the grain on that. Never quite owned anything like it and obviously when this rod's done one day I think I'll drill it out and put a fresh one in and hang on to this and keep using it because it's not often you come across ones looking that good. It's absolutely beautiful. I like the brass uh, plug there as well to put a lanyard through. Looks absolutely amazing. Really nice. Thank you, Ant. Really served me well the other day. In the initial stages of making the fire, if you feel like it's dying out, a very easy thing to do is just pick up the oxygen triangle. and It lets a lot more oxygen in at the base and generally increases the heat. And when the flames dance in the smoke above the bundle, you know you're going to be all right. You can just put it down. But this one's absolutely fine. Larch is pretty much a given with birch bark. The 
fire's burning ferociously. And it's way too hot to do anything on now, even cook. I never cook on a fire like this, always cooking on embers, unless you're really trying to boil water quite substantially. So we'll let this die down, and then we can get our sap out and start working with our compound. The fire's dying down a little bit now. There's not so much flame as there was earlier, and it's starting to stabilise a bit, and it'll be a lot easier to work on that way. It's generally best to work on the fire when it is embers and there's no flame at all in this context, or else what you'll find is the sap will get far too hot and burst into flames and it'll all get very messy. But while the fire's been burning, I've been pulling pieces of charcoal out from hardwoods that I like the look of and letting them cool down slightly on the side. They obviously won't go out, but it's best to get them ready so they don't deteriorate so much. While I've been waiting for the fire to cool down, I've double stitched my container, filled in the gaps a little bit more and reinforce the bottom. This way it won't require so much pitch to actually waterproof it. I've got this leather bag here and this moss is very very slightly damp and if any of the pieces of charcoal have still got some life in them we can just put them in here like this. We don't want them to be too damp but then they are very easy to re-dry if you do get to that stage. We can just collect them all. You don't need it too much really, this is just overdoing it because you never know. You may lose some. And then what we can do is just wrap them up and do up the leather bag and just smother them. And they'll run out of oxygen and go out very, very quickly. But you can use a metal container as well. With pine pitch sap, when the sap actually dries on its own and you haven't added anything to it, it'll be very much glass-like and um, when you sort of work with it, it's very brittle and it shatters very easily. And this is the reason you add things like charcoal to it or the droppings of certain animals like herbivores or even a bit of beeswax, for example. These are all things that kind of act as a binding agent for the sap when it's in a liquid state and it'll mix in and bind with it and make it a little bit more pliable and a little bit more usable as a compound. So this is the reason why I've taken some charcoal out of the fire to add to the sap. I did look for some rabbit and deer droppings on the way up but I wasn't successful and if they were dry or I could have dried them with the fire I would have added those to the compound as well. I've brought a tiny bit of beeswax with me and I may add that to the actual mix itself, although the beeswax is probably more valuable for me as beeswax than it is added to the mixture, so I may leave it out. We'll see how it looks when we start stirring it in. But let's go over the components one more time. I have two sticks here, these are two pieces of ash, and you'll want some sticks, because when this is liquefied and you start stirring it, you want to get impurities out like large lumps, but you also want to start stirring it once you take it off the embers. You'll see all this later, because it will start to solidify and turn into a lollipop on the end which will be your finished product. So you do want some sticks. I've got a pestle and mortar here just for grinding up my charcoal, although I may use the leather bag also to aid me in that. The charcoal should actually have cooled down now. You can see no smoke has been coming out of the bag there, or else that would indicate that we've got a bit of an ember going. But you can see it's, it's cooled down quite a bit and it's ready to use. So we have our binding agent there already. You may also want a piece of leather uh, to wrap around the finished product because they can be slightly sticky and over time deform and the leather stops it sticking to other bits of equipment in your pack but we'll go over that another time but obviously I've got my container here all ready to go and um, I'm going to use my pitch to seal that off and make it waterproof. sap will take a little bit of time to turn into a liquid we don't want to leave it too long but while it is doing that I'm just going to grind up a little bit of charcoal. You can obviously make a depression in the ground as well to act as a cup and line it with a piece of leather and that'll work too but I generally find on this soft soil you make your own depression just by doing it. So 
So this should be absolutely fine. Obviously don't need too much of that because it's going to be two or three parts sap and one part binding agent. So just remember that. You don't want to add too much and if you're unsure, add it in stages and that way you won't overdo it and ruin your mix. see how flammable this stuff is. That's why you don't want any flames touching it or it to get too hot. Well, we've got most of the impurities out of that now, it's just a liquid, so we can add our binding agent. So I'm going to add half the charcoal mix now. You don't want to add too much or else what happens is it all froths up and pulls over the edge. But it's good to put a little bit in just because it mixes in really well when it's hot. The rest I'll add when I've taken it out. So we've got this quite firmly out the fire there. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more charcoal. Don't worry about the big bits. And then we can start stirring it in. It can take a very, very long time to cool down, so you just want to keep stirring it and it'll begin to thicken up. Any kind of large particles you can remove. So you can see it there really starting to thicken up but it's not hard enough just yet and you can see it's very difficult to get off your fingers so I'd advise you do let it cool down or else it's a real pain. So now it's starting to just get to the point where we can start handling it to a degree, but only just. Start rotating it in there. It'll almost start building up. I've rescued as much as I can off of the egg. It took some time because the egg broke and it just not really a sufficient container in some respects but you know you can obviously use a metal container it just really does stick to the metal and it takes a long time to clean but I've got a lot of sap there a lot of um, pitch to use what I'm doing is just reheating it um, you know just some of the harder bits that I had to crack off and add to the mix and just kind of blending it all together but wrapping my finger around like this you know so it all mixes quite well can see it's very very pliable and it doesn't stick to your fingers as badly and you can sort of collect all the little bits that you wanted to get and just literally start shaping it and if there are hard bits or pieces that you're not happy with just hold it over the fire for a few seconds it'll begin to melt again it won't burn unless you keep it there for a long time and you can reshape it and mix it all together but this is you know absolutely fine and it's a, it's a good amount actually that's not a bad amount so there we are it's a considerable amount of glue should do fine on the container so I've been heating up the glue on the fire just like this till it's really runny and just draping it along the inside like this. And it's become quite tactile, like tar or chewing gum for example. And I can just start putting it into place where I want it to be. So you can see there it's nice and tactile now, just spent some time working it into place. Overdone it a little bit but wanted to make sure it was completely waterproof, no leaks. Haven't done around the top actually because I quite like that the way it is, it it'll be fine. Bit of a choppy wind direction today so I've uh, smothered the fire and uh, covered it up so there's no more smoke which is nice. 
But the container is finished, it's fully waterproofed as far as I know. I've not tested it yet. But it's looking good and I think we should put some water in it and see what it can do. Okay, hopefully it's waterproof. There we go. Any drips? Doesn't look like it. I think we're in luck. Nice. So it holds water pretty well. And you can drink out of it. Even the holes at the top don't prove to be too much of an issue. It wouldn't take much to stone boil in it either. One stone or small rock and you've probably got a rolling boil. But it'd be good to make a much bigger container. It's just getting the bark at the right thickness down the south end of the British Isles. It, it, it's much thicker in colder climates, so if you go up north to Scotland and you get up at some altitude, you can find some incredibly thick bark and make fantastic containers out of it. But this bark was taken off a fallen live tree. We generally don't take bark off of trees that are alive and standing because it kills the, the tree and you know, it's a pretty slow death and it lets infection in. I mean, if you were desperate, you obviously would, but you know, if you've got a choice, it's very easy to find a downed birch. They don't live for too long in comparison to most trees, but getting thick bark is the key. But in this video, we really just covered pine pitch and we covered spruce root as well as cord. So cord and glue or one form of cord and glue. There are other forms as well, like hide glue as well, which is fantastic. Um, you know, you can use lots and lots of different types of glues and cord. This is just one uh, small portion of it really. But you can make a fantastic container out of the two. And in coniferous woodland like this, it's abundant, you know, cordage and glue in that form. Um, beeswax as well is a fantastic uh, sealant for containers. The only problem with it, or with wax in general, is it melts at a much lower temperature. So pouring boiling water in, you're going to lose the waterproofness of the container and it'll start to leak in certain areas. I have tried it before. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks again for watching and um, yeah hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again guys.